Hi everyone, Adam here, back again. In this video, we're going to go over a little bit of conditional formatting. I'm going to make this table stand out a little bit, or some things in the table stand out a little bit. And really, the whole purpose of this is just to introduce you to conditional formatting and give you some practical ways to use it. In this video, I really want to address highlighting two different concepts. The first is based on participation status. And the second is highlighting the highest and lowest values in each of the columns that we have here so that we can determine when the athlete was at their best and when they were at their worst. The first thing that we might want to do is we might want to say, hey, any time that this athlete uh, was limited, we want the entire row of data to be yellow or a different color. Or every time the athlete is out, we want the word out to stand out in a big red color or something like that. So let's work on those two things. And then we can work on identifying the largest and the smallest values in any given column because maybe you just want to highlight the best and the worst. Um, and you can quickly see maybe all of the athletes' best performances line up at the same time or maybe um, they're at different times and so on and so forth. So to start, I'm just going to click on this cell right here, our first limited cell uh, by participation, and we're going to go to Format, Conditional Formatting. What you're going to see is you're going to have see all these different formatting rules. You can do things, all right, does the text contain something? Uh, is, is it a date, and is it before or after? So I guess an example is we could do this rule. It says text contains, and we could say limited. And it'll, this is how we format it, where there's a green. Right now we have it formatted in green, and we can adjust the font color. Maybe we want the font color to be a dark green and bold. I don't know. I'm making it up. And this is our rule. If the text contains limited, then we want it to format this way. And if we click Done, we can copy this and paste it to these cells. And we'll just paste the conditional formatting only. And now we can see that our rule here, our, one of our conditional formatting rules, is applied to this range. So D58 through D, D66, if any of these, whichever of these cells have text that contains the word limited, they will be formatted in this way. So that's an example of a conditional formatting rule. And it might make more sense to say, hey, if someone's limited, we want this to be, you know, we want it to look yellow. Now, I'm going to undo this for a second, and let's remove this rule. We can do that by clicking on this trash can icon here, and now it's gone. If we want to format an entire row based on what this cell says, we can add another rule, and we can choose something different, right? So we can say, oh, if it's greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to, in between, there are a bunch of different options. But for this, we're going to use a custom formula. And we can use formulas that result in true or false to pretty much determine or to use to apply conditional formatting to places. Essentially, if the result of your formula is true, then the conditional formatting will be applied. If the result of your formula is false, it will not be. So here's an example. We're going to say equals if, open parenthesis, one of the things that you aren't going to be able to do is click on cells to put them in the conditional formatting. You're going to have to type it in manually. So if cell, let's say D58 equals, quote, limited, end quote, then, comma, true. So if it's limited, we want the answer to be true. If it's not limited, then we will go comma false, close the parenthesis and it should work and if we want to apply this to a range of values we can say d let's say we want to apply this to cells a58 through m58 that's the range that we want to apply this rule to so we'll say m58 and the one thing that we're going to have to do here is lock in the a and the M, and lock in the D here. 
and now it'll apply to the whole row. And if we copy this, or if we just click done, or maybe let's format it first. So maybe it's this light, this this shade, and maybe it's bold also. Yeah, no, we don't need to bold it. And we'll click done. Now let's click back into this. Instead of A58 to M58, we can go A58 to however far, let's say we think that we could potentially have all the way up to row 80 in metrics. We can go A58 to M80. And once we've done that, now every row where in column D there is the word limited, the entire row from A through M will be yellow shaded. Now, what if we wanted to do something with out? So I'm going to go into our data set and just change one of these to out for this person. So here's uh, the person that we have, Trey Sung, and we'll make this out. That's his new participation status for whatever date that is. If we go back to our um, testing dashboard, here's our out. Well, it doesn't really make sense, right, because uh, this person has data. Maybe we just want to say, if this word is out, then let's make it uh, red so we can add another rule and we don't have to do an if statement here we can just say if the text contains and we'll just say quote out end quote equals out uh, maybe it's this this red color oops maybe it's white font with a red background a dark red background and bold and we can apply this to the same range we can go apply this to d58 colon all the way through d i believe it was 80 that we went to for our thing so we'll go d80 and click done and now if we just enter the word let's say we enter the word out in here it'll turn red if we enter the word limited in here um, we'll get the whole row turning yellow so these will apply as more data comes in, and they should adjust based on um, what you want to include and what you don't want to include. So if we just say we want to show the five records, then that'll be okay. And now I just want to format this sheet a little bit. So I'm just going to take everything that we have, go all the way to the bottom of my sheet, horizontally align and vertically align it all, just so it's kind of all consistent. Now, what if we wanted to highlight the highest value in any column, uh, a certain color, and we wanted to highlight uh, the lowest value in any column, a certain color. The way that we can do that, again, is with custom formulas. This is our custom conditional formatting um, with the formula feature. The In Excel, if you're used to Microsoft Excel, conditional formatting is a little bit more dynamic than Google Sheets currently. And you can have a top 10, bottom 10, and things like that. In Google Sheets, that doesn't exist. So you need to use formulas to do that currently. I'm hoping that, because Google Sheets has been accelerating really fast in terms of its feature additions and its and how, how well it works. So I'm hoping that they'll add these features at some point, and it's just a waiting game. But for now, I'll show you how to do this. One thing that I just want to mention quickly is that, you know, for me, this might be enough color. I'm, I'm okay. It depends on the information. All of these decisions and what you decide to do depends on the information that's valuable to you and how you want to use it. Uh, again, like, we have a lot of stuff on this dashboard. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of different colors, a lot of... This is not necessarily what I what I would do in, in one report or the way that I would do things. The, the primary purpose of all of this stuff is to show you how to do what you want to do by offering like substantial flexibility and by giving you a lot of different visualization and interaction options. And that holds true also for conditional formatting. So if we want to format this, we can go to Format, again, Conditional Formatting, and we can already see we have a couple of rules. Let's add, add another one. And we're going to do a custom formula. And we're going to go equals if, if this cell, or if E58 equals max 
for the maximum open parenthesis of e58 colon let's say e80 because we went we said all right we could potentially have 80 rows of data here or up to row 80 for for data so 58 to 80 i don't you know, 22 ish so if e58 is the maximum of all those numbers comma true comma false and we can close the parenthesis there and we can apply this to the range of e58 colon e80 and now uh, we see that we have green all the way going down to row 80. That's not what we want. What we need to do is we just need to lock in the 58 and the 80 range. And now you might be wondering, huh, 223, 223, why are they both not highlighted? And I want to take a moment to address this, which is one of the reasons why I want to do this rule. Let's click Done. And we, let's, we have two rules here. The order of the rules are the order that they are applied. So first, Google Sheets says, okay, I'm going to check to see if this cell is limited, and if it is, I'm going to put yellow on it. And if that's the case, I don't care about this second rule. And that is the case. So if we are to, if we want this rule to come first, or we want to check for this rule first, we can drag it and move it up. And now this rule will be applied before this one. But let's switch these back for now because I don't necessarily want the highest number to be look like this. There are other things that you can do too. So let's click in back into this rule and let's say, you know, instead of let's have no fill color, but let's have the font be green and bold. But still, what's going to happen is we cannot apply that green color to this cell here because the rules are still in order. So if we go to, uh, let me, I just want to go back to conditional formatting. I want to get out of this rule, done. If we move this rule up, now our formatting has gone for that cell. When you deal with more complicated rules, I, because you can't really use the editor in here that well, what I like to do is I like to copy the rules that I have and paste them outside. So I copied and pasted the first rule, and I'm going to go into our second rule here that we have, and I'll copy it and paste it. This is a good way to check whether or not you're getting the results that you want to if you want to set up, set up your rules outside before you put them inside. And we can try to combine these rules together with an AND statement. So what we can say is we can if E58 equals max of that, but instead we can say if AND E58 equals this max, comma, now we can add another expression, and also when, I'm just going to put in G71 for now, and close the parentheses and click enter. G71 right now is a placeholder for our second expression that we want, which is our second rule. So if we go into this rule, and we just copy this, D58 equals limited, we can copy it, go back in here, and replace G71 with it. So now we're saying if if E58 is the maximum of these values and this cell equals limited, we want to format something a given way. And let's click Enter. Now what we can do is we can copy this new rule that we have that's a little bit more complicated. And we can add a new rule. And we'll go to our custom formulas and we'll paste what we have. And this time we'll format it with a yellow background and a green bolding of the word and we'll again we'll apply it from e58 colon to e80 i believe or it might have been a58 to m80 let's try e58 to e80 and we'll click done and let's move this rule up so it checks for both of those things first. Now we've integrated both of these rules together. So first we're checking if both of those things are true. And then we're checking if uh, if it's a max value, then we're checking if it's limited. I might do limited then the max value, but it doesn't really matter. So now we've kind of integrated two rules together if we want coloring of a number and um, the background with different rules in place. 
So that's a pretty complicated rule, but I wanted to go over it just to show you this process of taking rules out, creating them um, on the Google Sheet first, and then pasting them in. If you just wanted, again, to get the negative number, or, or sorry, the lowest number here, we can take this rule that we have for the maximum, and we can change it to the minimum. So we can add a new rule, do a custom formula, and change it. Instead of if E8 equals max, we can say if E8 equals min. What do we want to do? Let's make it, uh, let's make the font color, or no back, no background, font color will be this red and bold it. And we'll apply this again from E58 to E80 and click done. And now we see that we have the lowest value highlighted. So I guess we might as well just go the whole way with this that, that I'm here uh, and we've done this. All we have to do now for this formula that we have that highlights the max, it, it highlights something with a green, uh, green text and a yellow background if it's the maximum value and the status is limited, is we can copy this and change max to min. So we can copy this, go to our formatting, add a new rule, and we can go to custom formula and paste in our rule that we had before and change max to min. And again, apply, apply from E58 to E80. And we can now, again, we'll make the yellow background and red bolding. This is just combining the two formulas again. So in case the lowest value is also where the athlete is limited, it'll still be red. And we can click done. And again, we'll move this rule up towards the top. That doesn't exist for this case, but now I'll show you just how to, all you have to do is copy and paste the formatting across and you'll have similar rules. When you get to these cells for the sprints or for lower is better, you might just want to invert that. So you might only want to, you might want to highlight the lowest numbers or the minimum. You might want to change this to min um, for the sprint time. So that the minimum sprint times are green. But for now, I'll show you, we can copy, let's, we have this applied all the way through cell E80. So we can copy this and we can paste special, the conditional formatting only. And now we have it applied here and we can paste special, the conditional formatting only. And a quicker way to do this, if you wanted to, is you can go to format or we can go back into our conditional formatting. And you, what we'll notice with these cells is that now our range is E58 to G80. We can just change the G to M and we can click done and we can go in here and just change the G to M and click done. And you can do that for all of the rules and it'll apply across the entire range. Now, if you wanted the conditional formatting to apply to two different ranges, like we do here, we want it to apply to body weight through broad jump and then we wanna skip over these three because lower is better for those three and we want to apply it here for K through M. What we can do is in the formatting, we can go, instead of applying for the range E58 through M80, we can do E58 through, it looks like G80 is where broad jump ends. So we can do through G80, comma, and also the range K58 through M80. So we can do K58 through M80, and click enter. And we can copy this range now because we want to apply it to pretty much all of our um, criteria so far. Click done. And we can apply it here. So we can paste it here. Click done. And now one thing that we notice is that there are no colors for the 10 meter sprint, 20 meter sprint, and body fat when they're highlighted. We'll have to create separate rules for that. And we can do the same thing here with the with the green done and with the red done now we have all of our rules for the higher is better metrics and there are more complicated ways to do this too um that i don't want to get into this is complicated enough but now if we want to apply these same rules one thing that i wish that google sheets had is like a copy rule feature but never mind neither here nor there, um, but we can recreate these rules, but invert them and apply them to this range. 
H58 through J80. But again, because we can switch metrics, this conditional formatting might not be a perfect strategy. And honestly, conditional formatting is generally, for me, more of a headache than it's, than it's worth. But if you want to, I'll go over this just in case you want to apply this stuff. Um, what we can do is we can copy our green is our green formula with the yellow background for limited. We can copy that and add a new rule. And we'll do our custom formula and paste this rule in there. And now instead of E58, we're going to change it to H58 and we're going to change this E to an H also because we want this to apply from H through J. And we're going to change this range to go from H58 colon to J80. And we will set up it the same way that we did last time where there's a slightly yellow background. And this time we're going to make this red and bold because this time the maximum or the highest number is the worst number since lower is better now. And let me just make sure that I have this right. H58 through J80. Or through H80, sorry. And when we click Done, I thought that should have... Where'd that rule go? Oh, we need to bring this higher than the A58 through M80. And now what we have, I'm not sure why it's not showing up on this. Oh, because uh, there's no yellow in the background. That's fine. So, so far this is working. Like I said, it's a little bit difficult to get through. Now we need to apply this rule also. Or let's go yellow, yellow, then um, we'll go yellow, yellow first. So then we'll copy this rule, uh, the, the original red one. and We'll apply that, apply that to H through J. So we can go to custom formula, paste it in here. And again, this time we'll change the E's to H's. And we'll change this range to be H58 through J80. And this one, again, yellow background. But this time, instead of red, we're going to have green and bold and click enter and now we need to move this rule up above the first yellow one and there so now we should see like the lowest value that's also yellow will be green now we just need to go to the other two rules and duplicate them also so this this white background one we can copy it and we can go here into our H through J range, which are our lower is better range, add a new rule, we'll go to our custom formula and paste this in here. And again, we're just changing the E's to H's. And because now this, this maximum rule, we're looking for the maximum value. Still, um, we're going to, because lower is better, we're going to want to make this no background and a red. If we assume this is worse. And we're going to apply this from H58 through J80. And there we see it. We see it got highlighted there. Perfect. Now we can click Done. And let's go click on another cell with, other, with our higher is better rules. And now we'll get the red one or the looking for the minimum. We can copy that formula. Go into our lower is better metrics or somewhere between H and J. And we'll see these rules for those. When you highlight the rule, you can see what it's being applied to, which is nice also. And we're going to add a new one, and we're going to go to our custom formula and paste what we have. And we'll change the E's to H's. H80. And now because we're looking for a minimum, which is a good thing if lower is better, we can have no background and green and bold. And we'll apply this to the range H58 through J80. And I don't know. So what we should see is we should see this. This looks like the lowest one for the 10 meter sprint. So that, so we click done. 
Yep, now that turns green, and the body fat lowest one will turn green. There are two of them. And perfect. So now we have this dynamic uh, table with some conditional formatting on it. I can remove these, these things here. And great. I think that's that's all I got. I might deal a little bit with this. Like I might, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. This might look a little bit different because I don't like the way the headers look right now. I think they need to stand out more, differ differentiate themselves, um, kind of like these. But in any case, that's it for this video. And that's it for this uh, historical database tutorial thing. In the next video, though, I'm going to go over some charts or a chart type that I actually learned from um, a colleague, Lorena Torres. She's a brilliant sports scientist, and she showed me a chart, and I really like it. It packs a lot of punch in a very small amount of visual space, which is powerful. So I'm going to go over how to create that type of chart in Google Sheets, although it's not exactly the same as the one that she showed me because Google Sheets has certain limitations um, that won't allow for that to happen, to my knowledge. So a uh, great job in this, in this tutorial. If you want to stick around for that, those charts, um, feel free to. But if not, then just great work on this. And, oh yeah, a little bit about me. Let's see. Favorite books. My favorite books. I haven't, I don't read books as often as I used to because I'm reading so much research or peer reviewed stuff. But I'm, I'm a big fan of How to Win Friends and Influence People by, by Dale Carnegie. That's probably one of my favorite books out there. I've recently read Atomic Habits by James Clear, also, which is fantastic. I'd like to know your favorite books, though. Maybe we can get a, a good book list going um, in the comments below. So leave a comment below uh, with your favorite book or your favorite books um, that have had, when I say favorite, I mean the books that you think have had the most impact on, on your life or how you go about thinking about things or doing things. And that's about it. Thanks again for, for watching. If the video is helpful, please make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you've gone through this whole thing, please make sure to do that so that YouTube knows that you're, someone is gaining some valuable information from this stuff. And thanks again for, for watching this. This is going to be an expansive project. So there are going to be many more videos, many more tutorials that work off of this framework that we started building, including integrating strength and conditioning programming. So strength templates and automating some of the features there with the 1RM data that we have. We'll also go into monitoring and potentially using exports from popular software companies that collect monitoring data and how to seamlessly integrate all of those things together within this framework. Thank you again for watching and being part of this community. I'm happy that we can all learn from one another and I'm feeling very grateful for all of you and everything that you teach me every day so hopefully this is giving back a little bit and teaching maybe things things that don't matter too much in in the big scheme of things but hopefully it's some some helpful information that might help you accomplish what you're trying to accomplish and if you decide to stick around through this process then I will see you in other videos, and I'm excited to see you there.